Hi folks, my name is Thomas Winter. I'm a product manager here at Apprise. And in today's webinar, we'll talk about setting up your WebViewer solution inside of Appian. So the solution is distributed via the app market and it actually lives client side in your browser, which means it's highly scalable because there's no Appian server dependencies. Uh, we don't have to load in any files externally from another system. And last but not least, um, there's no data ever leaving your Appian environment. So with that, let's get started. And for those of you who are attending live today, just keep in mind this is a pre-recorded video, but I'm going to be in the, the Q&A kind of live chat. I'll be watching alongside you guys and I will answer any questions you might have. So with that, let's get started by opening our admin console here from the top right waffle menu. It's going to load up for a second. And the goal here is basically to deploy our WebViewer plugins. So on the left hand side under system, I'll go to plugins. And then I can click on the add plugins button here on the top left hand side. Nice. And now I can search for any app market plugin here. So I'll just type in the price and that's going to bring up our two, um, our two components. So I'll start with the plugin component here and I'll click on deploy. So it's going to take a few seconds just to deploy our solution here. And once that's done, I can, um, move on to the next item, which is our connected systems plugin here. So I'll do the same thing, click on deploy. And now I can just verify that I've actually installed them successfully by searching for a prize. And I can see my two um, components in my environment now. So after successfully deploying both our connected system as well as our component plugin, we can go into our Appian Designer and switch over to one of our pages that we want to work on. So I'm just going to our Community Edition homepage here, and I already have it up and open in our designer here. So first things first, I already have some column structures laid out here. Um, but basically, if I go to the component section in our left-hand side palette here, I can scroll down to the bottom, and I should be able to find Web Viewer um, under Custom Components. So I'll just take this and I'll drag and drop it onto our Community Edition homepage. And now this should load up and the expected behavior here is to see an error that says document access connected system should not be null or empty because we need a reference to our connected system, obviously. So what I'll do is I'll go back to our um, designer page and I'll add a new connected system. And I'll do this by clicking on the new drop down button here and I'll select connected system. Now we can just search for web viewer, select our component. We can give it a name. So let's call this webinar web viewer const, uh, sorry, connected system plugin. And here we can specify our username, which um, which shows as author of uploaded files. And then we can also go ahead and add a chunk size here. So the chunk size basically um, tells the connected system how large a file chunk should be. Um, so if we're loading a file that's larger than this actual chunk size, it will be split into multiple parts and then we'll, we'll load those parts individually. And this is gonna help with um, performance. So I'll go ahead and create this connected system. And I'm also gonna give um, view access to our default users and I'll add our admin group in here as well. So administrators can have admin access. Um, I think the view permission should be fine though if you don't wanna add admins in here. All right, awesome. And now we should see our um, connected systems um, that we just created in here. So now I'll just go ahead and also add a constant. So this constant is just gonna reference our connected system. And that's just gonna help us um, 
give pass the reference on to our component plugin. So here I'll look for webinar and I'll just give this a name webinar content. All right. And I'll just create our constant here. So now we should see both our connected systems plugin as well as our constant. Okay, and back in our page here, I can now select our web viewer component. I can scroll down under component configuration on the right hand side, and I can go ahead and pass my connected systems constant here. So I'll search for webinar, and now I can pass it in. So once this was passed in successfully, we can now go ahead and um, see our web viewer UI pop up. And just to test it, what we can do is go ahead and pass an Appian doc ID. So uh, I'm just gonna edit the Appian doc ID parameter. And I can go ahead and select the file, grab the file ID and pass that on to our parameter over here. So after passing it successfully, we should now see our file getting loaded up successfully. And there you have it. Now we can save our changes and this will just be our most basic kind of setup of WebViewer and the Connected Systems plugin. All right, folks, so after we've made all of our configurations to what we are, we can save our changes and we can switch over to our community edition homepage. And we can now check out the viewer live in action. Um, so just a couple of notes. Um, we've talked about the UI in our previous webinar, but just a quick recap. Um, we have a sandwich menu here. Um, there's usually a lot of tools on the left panel, so you can manipulate your documents here in the thumbnails panel. Uh, you can navigate around your document and you could even show things like signatures or certificates in this panel. Um, we have view controls in here. Some new additions include um, the ability to compare pages right from this button here. Um, we have our zoom and other tools like panning and selection. And up here is our tools ribbon. So based on um, whatever ribbon you select, you will see different tools underneath um, the selected ribbon here. And then on the right hand side, we have our search tool. Uh, we have our comments panel. And last but not least, we have our Appian safe menu. So um, keep in mind the UI is highly customizable. You can add and remove buttons and change the behavior and look and feel of it according to your users' needs. Um, but today I'm just going to focus on a couple of newer features and use cases that we've brought over from WebViewer to Appian. All right, for our first use case, I'll show you how you can edit your documents live in Appian. Um, so what I did was I set up our web view component and I enabled these two flags here. So one of them is enable PDF editing. The second one is enable office editing. And I'm going to start off with PDF editing here in this case. So I can now go to our edit ribbon. You can select the edit um, button here. And I can go in and make changes to our PDF document. So I can select an element can change this title. This is a title. And once I confirm this, um, I can leave our editing mode here. And now you guys can see this is um, actually a part of our document. And I made that change live in Appian without having to download the file or open it anywhere else. Um, so after making this change, I can save it. I can download a version and um, yeah, this could save a lot of time in your workflows if there was a small error on a contract or an invoice going out. Um, this will enable you, your users to kind of quickly go in and make a change to your PDFs. And the final document looks like this. All 
Okay, awesome. So now let's take a look at how we can directly edit MS Office documents in your web viewer inside of Appian. And by the way, you don't need any um, MS Office licensing for this. This will just work out of the box. Um, so the prerequisites for this use case would be to enable the Office editing flag here. And then um, just make sure you're loading up a file from within Appian by passing the Appian document ID to this parameter. And that file should be um, file type docx um, if you want to edit it live. And if I just go in here and refresh, um, it's going to load in those changes. So uh, with the enable office editing flag enabled, every time we load up a docx file from Appian, it will automatically go into this editing mode here. And as you can see, we have our cursor here. I can go in and make this is a live edit. So I can go in here. Uh, we probably need spell check at some point, but right now you can go in and make changes to your text. Um, you can change the styling, you can change fonts, font sizes. Uh, we have colors available. We have um, alignment. Um, there's text spacing and we also have um, lists and as we keep kind of working on this um, this feature we'll be adding more and more functionality that you know and love from MS Word and we'll bring it into the viewer and we'll also bring it to Appian. Okay so for our next use case um, let's talk about document generation here. So on the previous example where we showed office editing, you might have already noticed um, on our document here, we actually have these template tags is what we call them. And the way you can identify them is um, they're kind of um, encapsulated in these doubly curly braces here that you can see. Um, so for this tag right here, for example, um, the tag name is first underscore name and then um, we tell web viewer that this is actually a template tag by just encapsulating it with these doubly curly braces or mustache handlebars is what some people call them. And um, basically to enable this functionality, you need to make sure that the enable document generation uh, parameter is enabled here by clicking on it or um, setting it to true in expression mode. And um, basically what that's going to do is um, give you the, the ability to fill any docx document with these tags in there. And uh, we can basically take data from Appian or from an external system, and we can use that data to populate our template. And this is, um, this is a good use case for um, kind of generating contracts. Um, it's good for document generation. And the beauty behind this is um, uh, the whole templates that are filled actually respect um, your styling. So if you wanted to have a bold first name, last name, you could do that. Um, there's actual text reflow. So if you have a really long name, um, this template generation functionality would handle that as well. And um, yeah, we also have conditionals and a bit more, um, more complex kind of um, template tags so you can dynamically generate a table for example you can show or hide different sections of a document and you can do stuff like um, adding images to a template and all these other things um, for this demo I will just show a more simple um, kind of letter a welcome letter and if I refresh this here I'm going to be able to fill the document just from the UI. So basically, um, after enabling that flag and loading a docx file, um, it is recognized. And um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but there's a new button that popped up here in the top right hand side. Um, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the text a little better. And then I'll open this modal. So basically what this modal is doing is it just pulls every template tag in that document and the user can now manually fill it. Um, 
And now if I click Save, um, we'll take that manually entered data and it automatically fills the document. So now if I um, download a copy here, I get a PDF file, and then that PDF file will have all of our data populated. Now you might think um, it's quite tedious to manually enter all this data. Um, so obviously there's another flow on how to fill these templates. And the way it works is we're using expression mode in the Appian Designer. And you can basically pass a JSON string uh, with key value pairs in it. Um, so the key would always um, be equivalent to your template tag inside of your template letter. And then the value would be the actual data. So you can actually hook up your Appian variables in Appian Designer. You can pull data using a connected system or any can use any data source basically to source this data and then fill your templates with it um, like we just showed here in the example. Yeah, and there you have it, folks. Um, those are some of the newer features and use cases we now have available in our Appian web year. Um, keep in mind, we still have our, um, our collaboration and all of our commenting and other features available as well. Um, so nothing has changed on that front. Uh, we've been kind of improving them as well, but I won't go into detail into all the new feature requests. Um, you can always follow our newsletter if you wanted to see our newest features, um, or you can always take a look at our app market listing um, to see what features have been added to WebViewer, or you could just reach out and ask me if you have any questions about WebViewer, Appian, or the product itself.